Hey everyone, welcome to CEO Check-In. It's Wednesday, it is St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I am not wearing green, but if you are celebrating, then I'm celebrating with you. One of my Irish friends said, everybody is Irish on St. Patrick's Day. So, okay, I'll take it. Uh, hi, Erin. Hi, Minish Sustimir. Uh, happy to have you guys with us. Erin is gonna come on in a few minutes. We're gonna do some live coaching. I'm excited about that. She runs a fast growing company called My Next Step, helping millennials to get employment. And I'm excited to talk to you. But first, let's do our Go Big Tip. So my Go Big Tip today is about committing to good habits. When you're scaling up your company, you're gonna need to figure out how to make time to do so many different things. And part of how you're gonna focus on the things that will actually grow the company is to have good habits. Now, I could talk about a million of good habits that I'd love you to have, but I'm gonna just focus on three, and I'm sure you already have some great habits. But here are three habits I would love you to commit to. One is to take care of your physical and mental self, because it's all too easy when you're building a business to put yourself last. I want you to commit to the habit of putting yourself first. Make sure you still get to the gym. Make sure you still take time to meditate. This is a marathon, not a sprint. It's not a coincidence that successful entrepreneurs almost all have the habit of not compromising on their workouts or doing a meditation every day. I meditate for 20 minutes every morning, no matter what. So that's the first thing I want you to commit to is having the habit of taking care of your physical and mental self. You are your greatest asset, gotta protect that asset. The second habit I want you to commit to is to doing the hard things first. Whatever is the hard part of your business, maybe it's the part you don't like, maybe it's doing accounts, maybe it's reaching out to get bills paid, maybe it's um, calling up angels or VCs when you're raising money, do the hard thing first. That's a great habit to get into. Uh, with my kids, I make sure they make their bed every day because that's a little win first thing in the morning, right? It's not that hard a thing, but you don't just roll out of bed and start your day. You make your bed. You build the habit of doing something every day and building on those little wins. And the third habit I want you to commit to is to run your calendar. Don't let your calendar run you. I know that you're wearing so many hats as an entrepreneur building your business, and it's easy to just get swept up in all the minutia that has to get done every day. But the entrepreneurs who are successful have found a way to run their calendar. This might mean blocking off time to think about strategy, blocking off time to do sales outreach, blocking off time to do marketing, hiring a VA to help keep you on track having someone on your team who makes sure that your, your meetings are confirmed. Uh, once you get to a place where you can have an assistant or a virtual assistant or an operations manager, it's really committing to looking at the calendar as this calendar is my business. So how am I spending my time? And making sure that time is being spent on the right things. So run your calendar, don't let your calendar run you. All right, super. So nice to see everybody joining in. Welcome to CEO Check-In. Hi, Batya. Hi, Marnie. And I am going to bring on, hi, Radia. I'm going to bring on Erin from My Next Steps because uh, she is building a company that coaches millennials about their job choices. She has a bunch of coaches who work with her and we want to hear from you. So let's see. I'm going to pull you up. Give me a second. My... All right. I just should be getting that in a minute and then you can pop on and go live. Um, I will say this, that as I was building a little PIM, my language teaching company, I did make a really concerted effort to look at the habits of more successful entrepreneurs and try to develop some of those habits. One habit I noticed a lot of successful entrepreneurs had was using efficiency and time saving apps and tools. And so even though I wasn't that techie a person at that time, I was spending a lot of time around entrepreneurs who were ahead of where I was, most of them guys, and they all had the coolest apps, the most time-saving softwares that they were using. And so I started getting into, okay, well, let me use those too, even if right away I didn't understand it or I needed their help getting it up and running. Now I've become a total efficiency junkie, and I'm the one teaching other people how to be more efficient.
But I got that from spending time around people who were ahead of me and not looking at, okay, you know, show me your whole business plan, but just what are your habits? And then me working on having those same habits so that um, I could do the same things too. Okay, hang, hang on, I'm gonna invite um, Aaron again. Here we go, Aaron. And speaking of working with teams, I know that Alyssa on my team is here with me and uh, she can always give me a hand if we have trouble pulling you on, Erin. But I just sent it in two different ways. So hopefully one of those will work. I think, what do you think, Alyssa? <laughs> I did this one. Uh, I did that, nope, not yet. And I, I asked her there. Yeah. And then I also hit her name there and invited her on that way. See, yep. look, go live. Yep. And she's not coming on? No. I would love Erin to come on. Maybe, um, maybe I'll bring on Rabia, who I know has a lot of habits as well, and then that can also check if it's something up with my phone. Wait, are we live right now? Yeah. Oh, hi, community. Uh, Erin, <laughs> if, if you're there, go ahead and click Julia's name in the upper left-hand corner and request to join live. Alyssa is our operations manager. <laughs> And we would love to get Erin on here if we can. So here, I'm, that's what I did. My right. next step. Okay. Boom. Yeah, Boom. Us. This happened to us last week, too, when we were going live with Carrie. Sometimes it can just be an Instagram update issue. Yep. Maybe Erin's going to uh, update. Erin, you might need to update. Yeah. Maybe you two could talk about that. I'll see if somebody else wants to go live in the meanwhile. Um, yeah, last week, Carrie just needed to update her Instagram, and then it all worked. You know, they're always making changes. So sometimes that could be it. So let's see. If somebody else wants to go live, you can just um, click on the request to go live, or I can pull you guys on, and we can do some live coaching that way. I either always like to have a guest on, or I just do live coaching. Um, oh, and Rabia did see my invite. That's good. Yeah, she can't go live right now, but that's fine. So let's see. Well, then let's talk about some mindset habits because I just wrote the book, Go Big Now. I'm super excited. It's coming out at the end of the month, March 30th. Thank you if you've pre-ordered. I know a lot of you have. And Go Big Now is eight essential mindset practices to overcome any obstacle and reach your goals. And that's a book to help you figure out what are the mindset practices of successful CEOs, leaders, politicians, what do they all have in common? I've been studying mindset for the last 15 years. I've had one foot in the mindset world and one foot in the business world, meaning I've been part of organizations that are to develop entrepreneurs teaching me all the business skills, but I've also been part of workshops, retreats, studying with coaches who care about how do you shift your mindset. And habits is a big part of that. You can have a habit of having negative thoughts. You can have a habit of undermining yourself. You can have a habit of saying, I can't do this until, right? I can't raise money until I, you know, understand finances better. I can't um, hire someone to help me with my company until I'm much further along. One thing we see a lot in our Million Dollar Women Masterclass is women who've been waiting until they're more successful to do certain things in their business. And sometimes just being in our community, being around other high growth women, having me as a coach, they suddenly start doing these things that they kept putting off and in fact, those are the very things that help them grow their business. So it's a whole chicken and egg problem where someone will think, well, I can't have an assistant yet. I'm not making 200,000 in revenues. But in fact, by getting an assistant, it's usually a virtual assistant, which is not a big investment of money and you can stop at any time. They suddenly get so much better at delegating and they get all this time back, which they then can use to do marketing, to reach out to new clients, to make more money. And so suddenly they are on that path to making more money. And we've broken that habit of thinking, I can't do this until I'm ready. Because so much of being an entrepreneur is about projecting yourself into the future and thinking, here's who I want to be. Now, how do I reverse engineer becoming that person? 
That's exactly what happened when I wrote my first book, Million Dollar Women. I was thinking I really want to help close the gender gap and make it such that women are earning as much as men are. We know there's been such a huge gap in earnings for so many years. When I grew up, women were making 77 cents on the dollar for every dollar a man was making, a woman was making 77 cents. Well, you know, fast forward 30 years later, women are making somewhere between 79 and 80 cents on the dollar, depending on the study you read. So we've really just gained a few cents. In the corporate world, we're not catching up very fast. Uh, the World Economic Forum predicted that it's going to take another 200 years for women to catch up with men in terms of what we're earning. Even though we know that so many more women are now the chief breadwinners in their families, men and women you know, are equally obviously qualified and talented. So we figured here at Million Dollar Women, if we can help women make more money in their businesses, that is a way faster way to close that economic gap. When you're an entrepreneur, there is no glass ceiling, right? But there can be a revenue ceiling. So we help women develop new habits so that they can have the habit of, I am going to put myself out there. I'm going to try new things. And even if they don't work, I'll have learned from them. And I can try other new things. We talked right here on CEO Check-In about the fact that making a decision, learning to make a decision, is such an important skill to develop as an entrepreneur. If you can't make decisions, you can't grow your business. There's so many moments where you have to just do the research, weigh the pros and cons, and then just decide. Um, so that's a habit to develop. Let me just see who else is joining us. Hello, Batya. Uh, and then we're going to try to bring Aaron on again. Hang on a second. I'm loving this conversation. Well, actually, no, it's not a conversation. It's me talking to myself. I want to bring on Aaron on for a conversation. Okay, Aaron's coming on. Woohoo! Um, so yes, we'll talk more about habits on CEO check in. But right now, I want to hear what's happening with Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for for your persistence. <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, we got it. Um, That's right. Yeah. Nevertheless, she persisted, right? Exactly. <laughs> Great exactly. Um, yeah, was it just an Instagram update? Yeah, and it's funny because I updated it last night, too, to make sure I was ready for it, but life oh, always likes to drive some curveballs but no i'm happy you know that's right. all right we're entrepreneurs we always find a way exactly. one door's open we find another one <laughs> exactly how are exactly. you doing today i'm doing really wonderful uh i'm on the west coast so have my morning matcha i love everything you're saying about habits and um i really think about like morning rituals that ground me and oh, we'd love we... to know one of yours thank you yeah how do you what are some habits that you've developed especially since you started yeah. your company a, a couple of years ago yeah, exactly. Something I kept realizing is that I would either stay up too late or I'd wake up really early and just start working and I would get in this kind of hamster wheel. And and the earlier this year, my sister and I, and my sister's on the East Coast, um, over the Christmas holiday, we started doing yoga together and really loved just doing it together. So now we have a Zoom meeting every morning at 5 a.m. my time, 8 a.m. her time, and we'll do a 30-minute yoga class. And then oh, I'll make a what a great way of connecting when you can't it's, be together. That's so it's cool. It's really, really nice. Does one of you lead it, or how do you do it? We're, um, sometimes one of us will lead it. Other times, um, I have, like, a subscription to a, like, digital yoga class, so we'll, like, share over Zoom and That's do it great. that way. And that hits one of the three recommendations I made today, right? Which is yep. take care of your physical and mental self. Exactly. Because if you don't start the day in a good state, right? It's like all downhill from there. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like I can tell what day I'm going to have if I do or if I don't um, kind of do that routine. So it's been really nice. So I love Thank everything. Thank you for sharing that. that. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Well, maybe you could introduce yourself for people who don't know you um, and tell us what you're up to at my next step. Yeah. So hello, everyone. My name is Erin Rowe. I'm the founder and CEO of My Next Step. And we connect people in their 20s um, with career coaches, financial advisors, and other industry experts to help them navigate all of the craziness around making job changes and career changes um, and kind of reducing that friction. So it's, I'm really happy to be here. Julia has been like an amazing resource in helping us go from I don't know what the heck I'm doing to, oh, I see a path of making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in a very short amount of time. So. Oh, thank you for saying that. Well, you have been just a sponge, like everything I've ever mentioned, you just run with it. And then we yes. again, it was like, wait, you did all that already? Okay. 
Let's move on to the next thing. I'm yeah. also really excited about what you're building, not only because there's such a need right now nationally, you know, for so many people who lost jobs or are nervous yeah. with the recession, am I even going to get, get a job, right? You're providing such valuable resources yes. to young people, but also because now when my kids are that age, um, they will have a resource. So thank yes. you. I wish in my 20s I could have, you know, worked with you mm -hmm. and some of your coaches to figure out my next steps. So uh, yeah. it's very, very smart what you're building. I'm excited and I just had a great conversation with a new user who said a lot of the help I was getting also was came from the same type of, you know, white male between these ages and I'm looking for people to give different perspectives and come from my diverse set. So we really have tried hard to make sure that you can get really different types of advice too. Um, which some people in all different that... careers, people of all different backgrounds. Well, exactly. I've talked very publicly about how part of the reason I created million dollar mm -hmm. women is that I was so lucky that I had amazing mentors, but almost all of them, except for maybe one or two people were white yeah. men. And while I was so grateful, there was often a feeling of like, well, it's not exactly the same for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I exactly wanted to talk right. to people who had literally had my same experience, right? Or women who yes. also wanted to have a big, rich family life and a big, exactly. successful multi-million dollar business. Yeah. So, you know, this is really important what you're doing, broadening people's networks. Yeah. That's exactly it. Um, so no, it's, it's been really great. And I'm grateful that we're able to chat about this now too. Me too. Yes. Yeah. So what, what can we work on today? What's something that you're working on this week? Yeah. So a big thing that I'm working on this week is finalizing our planning for Q2 and then thinking about, you know, what are the goalposts we want to be able to set as we enter the second half of the year? And one of the, one of the tools I've loved that you've shared with me is the 90 day plan and a million dollar women. We even build off of that even more, but would love to talk to you about how you think about main moves because mm -hmm. the big priority is kind of easy. The action steps are pretty simple because you know, that's what we're doing day to day. But I feel like the main moves are really like the themes that you kind of talk about when you're yes. going that one level deeper. And so just love to yeah, get a sense of how you think Absolutely. about that. Absolutely, yeah. And just to catch people up, we use something called the 90-day plan because studies have shown that it's very hard to plan beyond 90 days. Your brain just sort of can't go there, right? And even in our own lives, you can picture that, right? Like if I start saying, uh, Aaron, will you come visit me in New York in October? Like October just sounds so far away, right? But anything within three months is sort of manageable. So that's why it's a 90-day unit. Um, it's also a quarter. Right, there, there are four exactly. three month units in the year, so that works out very well for our businesses. And you can actually start it at any point, like, you don't have to mm -hmm. wait until the top of the next quarter. And the reason Erin started using this tool is she, like every other entrepreneur, was feeling like, I can't keep all this in my head. We're growing so fast, mm -hmm. I'm managing so many people, there's so many big changes happening all the time. How do I keep my team aligned? Yep. And of course, there is also great software that does this. I do want to give a shout out to that. Yeah. But if you're not ready to pick that software or you just like to keep it a little more low tech, mm -hmm. um, this 90-day plan is an Excel spreadsheet or it can be a Google sheet where your entire team is looking at the same mm -hmm. sets of three things. So that's what Aaron just brought up. The highest level is the priorities. And so you can do this at home if you're watching. You can even just take out a set of piece of paper, right? Mm -hmm. And you write priority. And then you write main moves. And then you write action steps. And I think there's one more like measurable amounts or mm -hmm. something, right? Yep. Is what you measure. So yeah. I recommend you for in a 90 day plan, you only have three to five priorities. Anything more than that is just too much. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this has happened yet for you, Erin, on your team, but when you share it with your team, what's amazing about it is then when you come up with your next big idea, because that's what we're always doing as entrepreneurs, right? chasing that shiny object, like, oh, another thing we should do this quarter. They, then this has happened to me. They come back and go, it's not in the top four priorities. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to wait on that, right? Did that yes. happen yet on your team? It has. I was like, oh, maybe we should launch a whole new LinkedIn campaign. And we were, they were like, that's not where we're focused right now. I love that. I love <laughs> that. One of my coaches who's teaching it at this year's summit, Ari mm -hmm. Maisel, who's an efficiency expert, um, he's, he's teaching uh, Raise Your Efficiency IQ at our Million Dollar mm -hmm. Women Summit. Um, April 22nd, 23rd, just have to give a little commercial for that. Go grab your ticket. In fact, we have some early bird specials that just started today. So go on my linked link tree and you can find that if you're watching. But he always says that, um, oh, what's the thing he always says? I lost that train of thought. Where was I going with that? Oh, yes, he, that you have to protect 
<laughs> you have to protect the company from the entrepreneur's mind. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And I agree. It's true that right, we can like sabotage yeah. our company by just coming up with so many ideas that there's no time to execute. Okay, yes. so back to what these levels are. So it's priority, mm -hmm. then it's main moves, then it's measurables, and then it's action steps. So the yeah. mistake most of us make is we just have a big to-do list, right? It's just the action steps part. And because everything you're doing has so many action steps, your mind just gets easily yes. overwhelmed with that. And it also, you know, your team mates are not James Bond. They cannot see inside your mind, right, with their mm -hmm. extra vision. So mm -hmm. having it all down on paper like this, it also allows you to assign different things to different people. It allows you to pick, well, is this a 30-day priority, a 60-day mm -hmm. priority, or a 90-day priority? Because some things are important but not urgent. And mm -hmm. some things are important and urgent, right? And making sure those aren't all mixed together. So the one Aaron was asking about is the main moves, which sits right under priorities. So I'll use as an example the Million Dollar Women Summit, because we plan this every year with a set of really dedicated volunteers from our own community. They're called the Leadership Council. And we meet once a month. And for the last five years, our fifth summit, this has produced a highly produced summit. Even though we only meet once a month, you think, well, how are you getting all this done? Because the work happens in between the meetings, as it should in your company, right? When you're having your mm -hmm. weekly meeting or however, do you guys meet weekly, Erin? Mm -hmm. Yes. We do. Yes. Right? That's not the time to be like, oh, I need that email or yep. what are we doing about this, right? That should just really be checking in high level. Where are you stuck? Where can I help? So what these main moves do is it gets everybody focused on what are the big things that have to happen because if they don't, none of those little things will go well. Mm -hmm. So for instance, for the summit, one of our top priorities is to raise, you know, thirty to $50,000 to put this thing on. It used to be a lot more when it was in person, but now mm -hmm. it costs a little less to put on. So main moves there might be, um, make sure that we stay in touch with all of our summit sponsors from last year. Mm -hmm. Main moves right there might be make sure that the website looks amazing because when sponsors go and start looking at that, right, that has to look amazing. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that we revise the sponsorship agreement from the prior year, right? Some big things, actually that, that maybe could be an action step. That's maybe not a good example. These are big high level things mm -hmm. that may each have several action steps to them, right? Like mm -hmm. Make sure the website looks amazing, might live in main moves. And then in action steps, you might have check in with the programmer about how much lead time he needs to mm -hmm. fix up the website this year. Reach out to all the speakers to get their bios and headshots. Consider using a different platform mm -hmm. than we did last year because last year was a big pain and we want to change, right? <laughs> I don't yeah. know what. Um, yes. But do you see the difference between the action steps and the main moves? Yes, that completely makes sense. And that connection is actually really helpful because I was almost seeing it like, priority action steps and I was getting lost in the getting a little too to-do listy within the action the steps moves. piece yeah and wanting wanting to have the main moves be it sounds like they're like pillars to it's like we need to get these big four things done to meet this priority to get these big four things done here are the action steps that go that's exactly right. And I'll quote one of my mentors, Vern Harnish, who wrote Scaling Up and is the founder mm -hmm. of the Entrepreneurs Organization. He has the one page strategic plan, which you use in mm -hmm. Masterclass, yes. and he calls them rocks. So yes, that, I love that, that right? Too. So rocks and main moves are very aligned. And that mm -hmm. comes out of a metaphor where like if you're at the beach and you're trying to fill up a pail, if you put like all the pebbles in the bottom and then try to fit the rocks on top, you're probably not going to have room for it all. But if you put the rocks on the bottom and then you pour the pebbles on top of it, the pebbles will like find all those little spots around the rocks and you'll have more room. And so yeah. it's the same when we're planning our businesses. We have to get those big rocks into place, right? Like if you don't get these big rocks into place, there's not going to be room for the pebbles, right? If our yeah. website doesn't look amazing and we haven't kept in really good touch with our sponsors and they still love us mm -hmm. when we make that phone call saying, hey, are you back in? It doesn't matter how good everything else is. Yeah. It doesn't matter if we dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. So that's a good way to think about it. It's like, this is the foundation and then yeah. you pour all the little details around it like the pebbles. Yeah, I love that. That analogy like resonated so deeply with me. I was like, now everything I'm looking at, I'm like, is this a rock? Is this a pebble? You know, like, especially even new ideas or like, we should really do this. Is that an offshoot of something like a bigger foundation um, as we think about the next quarter? Um, so no, I loved that. That was one oh, of my I'm favorite. That was like, helpful. And how is your team taken to it? So for people who are watching mm -hmm. who are like, well, I love this, but how will the team like it? Has it helped them in any way? 
it I it has helped tremendously, um, especially because I'm I'm inter I'm an interesting person where I'm like half or very organized and half just like chaotic. And I like live my life in between those two things, depending on what I think that's called an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have to save our company from exactly. our minds. <laughs> exactly. So how does that play out in your company? And your, yeah. Your so a lot of times before having this, there was a lot of like, oh, crap, we need to make sure we get this done. Or it was a lot of like reactionary mm -hmm. moments. And what this has done is helped us all be more proactive. And if I've officially been able to really step back and delegate, and I don't feel like I'm thinking for my team, they're thinking for themselves and coming to me with good ideas to be like, oh, I know, like, this is kind of our priority. And this is the objective. I know you said you wanted to do a Instagram story, but instead we actually researched that the post is better and we could do it this way. That's a very specific example, but they're being but that's fantastic and that can make a huge difference. And I'm sure they feel so much more ownership, right? That you're that's not exactly like, hey, you it. guys do this. They're coming forward with great ideas. Exactly. It feels like everyone has like a true roadmap which is really, really nice. Um, and don't so you love it, Erin, when someone's like, well, wait, shouldn't we have this action step too? And you're like, yes. I didn't even think of that. Thank you yes. so much. It's my favorite thing. Oh my goodness. Someone Completely. sent like a great, one of my, new, uh, we got an operations manager and I will t like. Congrats. That's amazing. I hope she's as awesome as Alyssa. She can't be as awesome as Alyssa, but I hope she's at least on the same spectrum or level. <laughs> she is fantastic. Um, she, uh, we brought her on last week. I gave her like just some general background and she's already running with everything. She sent like to do lit, like updates, follow-ups from calls, all of these good things. She's checking in to make sure I have everything I need for my calls. Amazing. Um, Shout out to operations so managers, right? Shout because out. We can't do it all. We're not even that good yes. at it, right? right. It's like yes. whenever Alyssa takes something over from me, it comes back in a state that's so far beyond what I would have done with it. Like we, yes. we all have our genius work. And you exactly. know, usually when you're the entrepreneur, it's pretty rare that the entrepreneur who has to also act as, you know, the visionary mm -hmm. um, also has the skills of being what's called like an integrator, someone who integrates yes. all the pieces. Yes. Uh, what's your ops manager's name? Uh, her name's Adrian. Adrian, uh, so she Adrian. probably helps you pull all the pieces together, right? And have them yes. keep moving. That's exactly right. She's also re-looking at our partnership emails and outreach. She's now understanding like, oh, you say this on this part of the website. What if we pull that in here? Or it looks like you're free this day. Maybe we should fill it up with some like partnership meetings because we're already doing our planning. It's just, I can't speak enough about how amazing she is. I am delighted. And you know, it would be helpful for people watching because we have a lot of women in our community who are like, how do I know when I'm ready mm -hmm. to bring someone on in a role like that? How did you know yeah. you were ready and what did you do to prepare? It's so funny. And what you were saying earlier around, uh, I'm not making this much in revenue, so I shouldn't have to do A, B, and C. And I was feeling a lot of that, especially at the end of last year and this year. It was on the in the 90 day bucket of like find a VA or an operations, find someone to help. And I hit a point on um, a couple weeks ago where I was like, I'd already been recommended this person, but I was like, I'll talk to her at the end of the month. And I was like, I am scheduling all of these. We're onboarding coaches. There's a whole work stream around that and getting paperwork and making sure they know how to use the system. And I was like, I spent two days doing that. And I was like, I, I oh can't do this anymore. No. I emailed her immediately <laughs> saying, like, can you can I interview you now to make sure that this is a good <laughs> Forget day? the end of the month. Yes. Today at noon. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out great. And it, what also I will definitely recommend is so she, her backgrounds in theater and stage management, which is very different from coaching and project management in the corporate sense, but her ability to work with different people, her ability mm. to stay organized, she knows how to manage big budgets has been like invaluable and such a transferable skill. So also I like really encourage people to think about, you know, just because someone doesn't have like the exact experience you're expecting looking for the, okay, but do they know how to do these like fundamental things I need help with well? That's a really good point. And are they someone who can work with people of all different backgrounds? Exactly. Who like to organize things, right? And yes. be excited to create spreadsheets and, she was and so keep excited. everyone on task. I was like, I need you to schedule a lot of meetings. And in my head, I'm like, she's gonna be like, I hate that. And she's like, that, that sounds great. I love it. <laughs> 
I love that. Keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes. Well, and I have to say, Alyssa and I, like this, this joy of finding kind of our yin and yang mm -hmm. has not faded. You know, she's been here for nine months and we're still almost every day, like, she's like, I love that you want to have all these big ideas and I yeah. can you know, execute. And I'm like, great. I love that you execute because my big ideas would just stay like in Sharpie, written exactly. on the wall on a piece of butcher block, <laughs> right? Without exactly having it. that great partner. That's so I'm exactly so, so happy it. for you that you did that. Now, what about the financial piece? Because a mm -hmm. lot of women say like, well, but that's going to cost me money. How do I know mm -hmm. I'm going to make it back? How did you get yourself to the place? It's a mindset thing, right? Yeah. Where you're like, my company's growing. Like, did you do a spreadsheet? How did you figure it out? Yeah, so I did a spreadsheet based on, so we had one, one large proposal, which helped just with the, I think it helped me with general confidence. And what was really nice about that is we scheduled it out. So even though we won it in January, we're not starting it until June because it'll be like really focused on an internship program. With that, oh, good. So that used, buys you a minute and congratulations, by the way. Thank that's you. great. Um, and that has also helped us just have a really great initial conversations with other partners to do similar types of things. And at that moment, I said, okay, we have the potential revenue to support this long term. We have the funding and or we have the like grant funding and stuff to support it now. So let's not like wait until all of these come to fruition, let's ramp someone up. And so we did it. some like math around all of that um, just to make sure it all worked. And the other thing I've been doing is just being really transparent and communicative with the people I've brought on saying, it is a startup, there is risk. I am not gonna try to wrong you in any way. This is how much I can pay you right now. And as That's the right. business- And we're grows, building this together, right? It's, yeah. it's going on a journey together. And, exactly. and people really respond well to that. I found, you know, when I yeah. was building Little Pim and even in my new company, like, this is what yeah. we can do, right? And it's like, if we grow, we all grow together. Well, exactly. And it's great that you took that sign of we, we won this big project as, and I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like you were saying, well, where there's one, there must be more. That's exactly so if it. if I staff up properly, right? This one just kind yeah. of came in, lucky me, great. I hustled my yep. way into getting this. But yep. now if you're staffed properly, you could have 10 more like that, right? Exactly. That nice? We can actually be strategic about getting it. And yeah. one of the big things that's been holding us back is like, I have all these great partnership ideas, but I don't have time to write every single email or do all of the like really nice research that really makes this partnership feel like it's symbiotic and mutually beneficial to everyone. And she's been, she built a whole network map around, these are the LinkedIn connections you have to this company. These are the values you guys align with. And we're already embedding that to have just like stronger outreach emails. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, it sounds like yeah. she's a great fit. I'm really, really happy for you. And thank you for coming on to share thank all you. that. You're, you're such an important part of our Million Dollar Women Masterclass community. Thank we're so happy you. you joined and we're going to see you at the summit. Another yes. little commercial, April 22nd. So excited. <laughs> you have your ticket? Did you already register? I've, I think I have, I need to double check when you were saying it. I feel like I did because I've already blocked my calendar, oh, but I think good. I did okay. it in like 6 a.m. I was like all making sure I did it. You know, current and grads come for free and then everybody else. This year we've lowered the price mm. a lot to make it really accessible due to the she session and the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and our five year anniversary, we're gonna have 500 women. So we thought, well, let's make it just super affordable. Right now it's a early bird special. I think it's $59. Like it's been a $399 ticket. <laughs> every single year so we're taking this very seriously and yes. super excited to have 500 high growth women in one place i i think it'll be amazing i'm really excited thank you me too and our mutual friend aaron carpenter is on a panel did you see yeah. that oh i did see that i'm ex i'm so excited for that too. i know because i don't even know the full story of how she got funding from serena yeah. williams and bumble and you know I, nude bar is on fire her company it's I'm just Crushing so proud of her it. so that'll be fun to hear her tell the whole story publicly I'm really excited. Well, Great. amazing. Well, Thank so you for having me on. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You Enjoy too. Enjoy your day. And I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye, right. Aaron. Take care. All right. Super. Well, we we did not let technology get in our way. There's always a way, especially if you have an awesome operations manager. So thank you for the save, Alyssa. Um, in the meanwhile, please do go grab your ticket for the Million Dollar Women's Summit, 500 high growth women entrepreneurs learning from keynotes, panelists, 
We are going to have incredible networking. There's also going to be a fun book launch party for my new book, Go Big Now, on the first night with uh, introduction by Tiffany Dufu, founder of The Crew and best-selling author of Drop the Ball. So don't miss it. But I'm glad you're here with me today, or if you're watching at home, thanks for tuning in. Please follow, like, share, and comment if you enjoy these CEO check-ins, and look out for the Go Big tip, which I also do separately, which you can also like, follow, share, and comment. Thanks for being part of our community, and I will see you guys really soon. Next week, I'm taking off because I'll be running a retreat, but um, I'll be back in two weeks with CEO check-in. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.